HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Our podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is continuing to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals. From MSNBC's Your Business to Inc.com to a whole bunch of other sites, uh, we are enjoying inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. This is due in large part to the wonderful guests that uh, join me here. They give of their time and their expertise so that all of you can pick the things that you need and implement the ideas that they share so you can uh, be more successful. Today we have uh, such a guest. Today I am joined by John Morrison. Get Clear Consulting founder and CEO John Morrison believes choosing the right words is key to helping customers understand what companies are offering. Using the power of story, John helps people talk about what they do in a way that both captures attention and generates business. And thank you so much for joining me today, John. Well, it's a privilege to be here, Diane, and I'm happy to serve your, your audience as best I can. Well, thanks. I, I just, I, I love this whole concept. Um, and, and, you know, most businesses, and I would say probably most small businesses, the, the thing they struggle with probably most is getting new leads. So, Will you explain how story brand marketing um, it, it allows them to 
succeed at getting leads. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree with you that leads is the thing that, that keeps people up at night. And I think, I, well, I used to think that it was, you know, having a bad website or not having a fully integrated marketing strategy, but it actually, the way it manifests is leads aren't coming in. And so the question that I ask is, okay, where are we missing opportunities? So a client comes to me and says, I'm not getting any leads. First thing we'll do is pull up your website and we'll look at, okay, how are you communicating what it is that, that you do? Is it confusing people? Do they know what to do? Uh, is there even a button that says how to work with you? And if, if any of it is confusing, what people will do is we've, we've learned that there's probably someone else they can go to where it's clearer. And so they'll just pop to another website, jump on Google and find, find one of your competitors and, and likely uh, go with them. So the truth is you never really know how many leads you're missing out just by confusing messages. And that's where I found using the power of story, you can really tap into people's psychological desires, what's driving them to go on a website like yours or you know, Google what they're Googling and try to find something, a, a solution to their problems. And I mean, well, the rest writes itself and I'm happy to, to share that kind of little bit of a secret about using story in your marketing to get new leads. Okay. So I think it's so interesting that people don't even realize how many leads they're not, that they're missing out on because people are just moving on someplace else. Um, but it leads me to another question because we hear a lot and we have been hearing a lot, I would say for just the past couple of years that being able to tell our story is what's going to connect us to our prospect. But really, people want to know how we can solve their problem. So how do we tell the story? Are, you know, are we telling the customer's story? Like, how do we tell the story in a way that is compelling and appealing and attractive to right. our prospect? I think that's the, I think that's the breakthrough is, uh, you know, people would come to me and say, you know, I've, I've heard the story is, is great and I need to use a story and uh, help us tell our story. And I say, well, first of all, I'm not going to take your money if you just want somebody to tell your story because you'll just bore a lot of people and you won't get any more results. And I'm only interested in your results. And so what if you, what if you switch that around and said, we know story is powerful, but can we help uh, insert ourselves into our customer story? Because every, every one of your clients wakes up every day in the, as the hero of a story. It's their story, but it's important to them. In fact, it's the most important thing to them. They watch a, watch a movie and they identify with the main character. It's because the main character is trying to overcome some problems to win the day. And that's how our customers or clients wake up every single day. They want to win the day and there's things that are keeping them from that. Uh, whether it be, you know, uh, something, uh, a widget or a, a, a problem, a snag that they're hitting. Sometimes it's a clogged drain. Sometimes it's not getting any leads, but there's something that's stopping them from, from getting what it is that they deem to be happily ever after. And that's where you all of a sudden come in and say, look, I can help you. Just like uh, Gandalf helped Frodo, just like Yoda helped Luke Skywalker, just like Hamish helped Katniss. Uh, I can help you. Uh, get where you want to go and all of a sudden you become very interesting and so use the power of story but use it in your client story or else they're not going to really care. Um, one of the examples that I give is uh, you know if somebody's really adamant like you know please help us tell our story I was like okay let's let's see if uh, this works. So the history of Clorox bleach is one of you know they discovered a recipe in the 1940s it was in a lab and let's say grandpa passed on the recipe of this beautiful bleach down to his sons but then there was a problem in the family and one of the brothers wanted to go into detergent and one of them wanted to take the bleach and go in a different direction and all of a sudden you're sitting there with your eyes rolled or falling asleep or likely daydreaming because nobody really cares about the history of Clorox bleach. <laughs> what they do care about is can you take the stain out of my, sh my favorite shirt the day before I have to give a big presentation and I don't want to look like an idiot I want to wear my favorite shirt because I know it, it I feel great in it, but because I had some, you know, uh, some, uh, some ketchup or something from the last time I wore it, now all of a sudden I want to wear it, but I'm going to look like an idiot if I have a ketchup stain on it. And then all of a sudden Clorox becomes very appealing to me because it, it could help me win my story, which is if I win this pitch, if I win the deal, I'm going to look really good, which is what I care about. So people are quite, you're, you're kind of realizing that, you know, people are naturally thinking, what's in this for me? And if you just go on about your story and the history, 
and how many how great you are and how many awards you won while thinking you're actually winning over people you're actually repulsing them because uh, in a world of limited resources where they might see you as competition and so you know you're the hero of a story and i'm the hero of a story well hey that's kind of interesting that you're doing that but i really have to uh, win my story and so you know they might shake your hand and take your card and send you off but what they're really looking for is the guy who's going to help them and that's what i think the beauty of the story brand framework really says is you are not the hero of the story you may be the hero of your story but if you want to get real with your customers and and become something that or someone who's a key player in their life you've got to realize you're the guide to help the hero win the day and storytellers know that they know that you know a, a, a main character is actually one of the weakest characters especially in the beginning the guide is the strong one he's the he or she is the powerful one that's going to say hey i've got a plan i'm not worried about these problems that are holding you back i know how to win and here's how we do it and that's the beautiful thing about about storytelling is the guide actually gets to be the strongest one you know we we want to be the hero but actually the truth is the hero is weak and we need to help the hero and that's time i could go on but i'll let you continue wow I, I, I yeah but i find this so interesting because i think most people feel like in their marketing, they have to be able to describe how they are the hero, how they are here to save the day and solve the problem and yeah. whatnot. Oh, exactly. I mean, you know this though intuitive. We all know this. When we go to a party and somebody, we meet somebody and they literally just talk about themselves and how great they are, <clears throat> we're looking for the next person because we're just like, you're, how did you even fit in the door? Your head is so big. Or if you're on a date and somebody just wants to talk about themselves yeah. and where they went to school and how they won, you know, the championship in football. And, oh, look, they still got their ring on 20 years later. You're just like, holy cow, do you I care about me at all? Because the truth is that interest dead is interesting. And when people show interest in us, we generally tend to like them. And so I think when we market, we need to realize we got to take an interest in the people that we're trying to reach and not just show how great we are. And we know this, but for some reason, we tune that totally out when it comes to creating our marketing collateral. And I just think it's hilarious. But hey, it makes me lots of money, so I'm fine with that. <laughs> it creates a market. Right? right. If things weren't screwed up, you yeah. would have to go find something else to do. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Who knows what I'd be doing, right? I just get to look at, open up the website and be like, you're losing a lot of money by the way the words are. Yeah. And, or wow. just to talk, you know? And, and we talked about leads, Diane, and I think the truth is if you learn how to talk about your business in a way that's compelling, we don't even need to talk about the website. Just in, when people ask, what do you do? You know, if you start, you know, saying, oh, it's confusing, it's a long story, or, oh, I got to tell this again, you've just missed a potential opportunity for either doing business yeah. with that person or someone else. And, but if you say, you know, this is a problem in the world and I, I'm solving it in this way so that people can, you know, reach their whatever it is that they want. So in my business, I say, you know, most companies don't know how to talk about what they do. And when they try to do it, they confuse people. I have a framework that allows people to capture the power of story and, uh, you know, leverage it to gain in, uh, interest and gain business. And people are all of a sudden are like, wow, that's cool. You know, even just when I was, we were taking back some furniture the other day that didn't work in our house. And the furniture guy said, what do you do? And I told him, and he's like, do you have a cart? And I was like, even when I'm taking back furniture, you know, you can gain, you can gain new leads. And it's not just... Like, it's not me. It's literally just the framework. The stuff is powerful because people want to know, how does this problem get solved? When you, when you say that there's a problem in the world, people instinctively think, well, where's the solution? Is this problem going to work out? In every good movie, the problem is actually what drives the story forward. As soon as the story's over, there's no, there's no or sorry, as soon as the problem's over, there's no story anymore. Proto right. gets the game, throws it into Mordor. And all of a sudden, you know, you have one more scene in the Shire and one more other scene of everybody going on a boat. But other than that, the story is pretty much wrapped up. And, and the problem is actually what drives people's interest. So when we say, people say, what do you do? And you say, well, look, here's the problem and here's how it makes people feel. And here's how I'm solving it. People are like, well, hey, good for you. That's good. You know, and what they'll do is they'll take either your business card or your name and, and file it in the Rolodex of their mind under that problem and say, when I have that problem, or a friend has that problem, I'm going to call this person because they know, you know, isn't that so much better than like saying, well, it's confusing or it's a long story or my family started a company, you know, we started some bleach. Right. You know what I mean? 
So there is a way to talk about what you do in a way that really connects with people. And it's exciting because it actually gets people's eyebrows up. I've just learned to read eyebrows. That's when you can really tell if you're connecting with somebody. If their eyebrows go up, then whatever they say, you know they're interested. If the eyeballs go down, no matter what they say, they're, they're confused. <laughs> so they can say, oh, that's really interesting. Okay, well, thank you very much. If their eyebrows are down, <laughs> you lost them. Gotta go, right. <laughs> yeah, when eyebrows are up, wow, that's interesting. You know, it's like you can really tell. It, people will just tell you everything, anything, you know, to, to sound polite out their mouth, but it's the eyebrows that you can tell if you've made the connection or not. I think the story brand framework really works for, for raising eyebrows. That's so great. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. One of the things that drives me craziest is this whole 30 second pitch, 30 second commercial thing, because the minute people open their mouth, everyone stops listening to them because it's all about them. It's all about the mechanics of what they do. It's not about the solution, right? It's mm. not about the result that yeah. they help someone achieve so that person can be happier or more prosperous, whatever it is, you know, whatever, whatever that end goal yeah. is. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Brian Regan, he's a comedian, a good clean guy. He's got a, a funny YouTube clip called the me monster and it says that at every party you go to, there's always somebody who wants to one up everybody. So if you have a story about losing two wisdom tooth teeth, they've got a four wisdom tooth story. Or if you've been to one place, they've been there and back in another place. And you went on this cruise, or they went on a luxury cruise even further away. You know, it's like the me monster wants to wants to take over every conversation. But if you come humbly and just say, look, don't say the awards that you've won. Don't say you're a fast-growing company, yeah. 500, or you got this amount of money, you're having your best year ever. Just say, look, a lot of people struggle with this. And, and I found uh, a way to help them. And I want to solve problems. And, you know, that's the beautiful thing about business is that we actually all solve a problem or else your business won't, doesn't exist, right? There's some market caused by somebody losing sleep at night. And what you want to do is put your finger on the fact that people are in a lot of pain uh, because of it, or they're frustrated or they're uh, stressed out or anxious and you can help them. So you're actually in the problem solving business. And once you learn how to talk like that, you become very interesting to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not about you. Yeah. Yeah, boy, I just love that. Even in, let me just say, oh, sorry, I'll just say one more thing. <laughs> this was one of the, yeah. I was talking to a bunch of chiropractors and we were talking about their websites and I said, guys, how many of you have an about section on your either homepage or your about or your uh, website? It's actually the second most clicked button on a website is the, the about section. And I said, you know, even your about section is not about you. You've got to write it not from, you know, where did you go to school and, you know, all these kinds of things that we put in there, but it really is about how do you connect uh, empathetically with uh, somebody browsing your website? You know, even your about you section is not about you. It's about the person reading it. And so you've got to write it not to boast about yourself, but to make a connection of empathy and authority. And I think a good guide has empathy, meaning you connect on a human to human level. Even if you're B2B, you're still human to human. And everybody's in the H to H business, we could say, right? And so you got to yeah. make and you understand what they're going through, you know the pain or you, you, the struggle is real, and yet you can help people. Here's how many people you've helped. You know, you, there is a place for talking about yourself, but always with the other person in mind. What do they need to hear from me so that I, I can present myself as a trustworthy, uh, authoritative figure to, that they're going to want to give their money to to solve a problem? Absolutely. So speaking of that... Talk to me some about what an effective call to action looks like, because this is another place where I think people are just confused or just don't right. know. Right. So we've all been to a website and we wanted to uh, get in touch with the person, right? Think, okay, this, I need this person's product. They're offering a solution to my problem. I need to call them. So what do you do? Where, where do you go? And, you know, you got to go to the right, scroll up to the contact a button and then scroll down to find a phone number. No, not the fax number, not the email I want to call. So I pick up the phone and then I call through there. That's kind of a lot of steps, right? And in fact, it actually, it could be confusing. What could, what could be a good solution is to actually have a button often on your website saying, here's the call to action. Here's what I want you to do. And it should be clear and it should be early and often. So a good call to action is looks different from all the other buttons that are available on your website. And it actually, I, I'm an advocate for saying, you know, people need to hear 
what you want them to do three or four, five times even. And so put the call to action often, buy now, be assertive too, right? Because I love what Donald Miller says in the book, like women have been frustrated with men lately because they're like, they're never clear on what they actually want. It's like, hey, do you want to sort of hang out? Do you, do you like to drink? <laughs> Like, are you asking me on a date or a hangout or to a game? What are you asking me out to do? What, like, give me, yeah. give me some clarity here, right? So if you're confident about your product, then you don't have to worry about being pushy or salesy because you know that you're actually going to make that person's life better should they yeah. take, go do business with you. So put it clear, put it often, and put it early. And, and a good call to action says, you buy this now. Um, so that's, and I would say most most websites would get way more traffic if they did it. But you know, it doesn't even have to be a website. It could be an email. So like, what do I want the person to do in response to this email? Do I want them to schedule a call? Do I want them to, uh, you know, download this resource? Everything should have some kind of like, because you've spent all this, this time, you know, you only have one life and you only have a certain amount of hours uh, per day. So you've spent some time on reading my stuff. So here's what I want you to do to get the next, to take the next step. It should be clear or else people don't necessarily know what to do. Right, right. It's like we're afraid to say it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're confident in what you're offering, whether it be a guy asking a girl for on a date, you know, if you're confident that she's a good fit for you, then ask her out on a date. But if you're, com if you're a business and you think that people should buy your product, then ask them to do that and they'll respect you for it. And if they don't, then they weren't supposed to be a customer app in the end anyways. Well, and that's really the point, right? Is that right. you, because I think that's the other thing. I think so many people spend their time trying to be appealing to everyone right. that they aren't really um, hitting the people who should be their right. customers. Right. Yeah. And I mean, if, if you're not convinced that your product is good, then don't put a call to action there. If you are convinced, which is what, men, what many are, entrepreneurs want, and they want to grow their business, I would say if there's one call to action from this time, it would be make sure your website has a call to action and like some kind of button saying buy now or schedule a call or do something. And, uh, and I bet you'll see way more of those uh, leads start to convert with people that at least know what to do. And you know, even if they reject you, at least they'll reject you not out of confusion, but out of this is just not for me right now. Right, right. Which I'd yeah. rather have that than, than somebody be like, I don't know what to do here. This is confusing to me. I'll go somewhere else. Exactly. I can live exactly. with, I can live with rejection. I can't live with the fact that somebody was confused, especially when you're like me and you have a company called get clear, right? If there's ever, a time, <laughs> if my wife's ever that, like, that would be a problem. Right? Yeah. If my wife's ever like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, oh, you know, can I quit my job? <laughs> oh. <laughs> to be the clarity guy. <laughs> maybe that's just personal. That's really funny. All right, I got to take a quick sponsor break. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. If you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one-month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Transform Your Company by Alex Vorobiev and The Irresistible Consultant's Guide to Winning Clients by David A. Field. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you, and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with John Morrison about leveraging the power of story. So Talk to me some a, a little bit more about the website, but in terms of it being a sales brochure, because this is, once again, something else that I think people are hearing mixed messages about how their website should serve them. Yeah. Well, um, the first thing that I have great empathy with anybody is one, you're, I've never met somebody that was fully confident and happy with their website. Maybe once in a flood, yeah. but there's always somebody. I mean, that's almost like a good talking point in a, in a conversation with people is like, Hey, what do you not like about your website? And then I'll always tell you something. And I have a lot of empathy for it because the technology is constantly changing, you know, and it's actually good. The, the, the changes are good because anybody can now design something 
uh, with, a, with a template, you know, 100 bucks, and you can get a really beautiful site. The issue that I find most people have is that uh, it's the words on the website. So you have a website, but what do you put on it? I mean, the, some, of the, some of the templates come with standard writing, but how do we know that that's actually connecting with your people? And so some people just aren't great with words. They're really good at what they do. They're experts, but they don't, they're not copywriters, right? So I have great right. empathy. And, uh, and I understand that it is difficult to find the right words, especially when you're so good at what you do, right? Because I don't know if you ever hang out with like doctors or nurses um, and you listen to them talk to each other. Like if you've got like two or three nurses in a room or, or doctors or, I mean, teachers are the same, but they, all of a sudden their language is just like, you know, there's all these, this code for what they do. And I had a code blue and ROTW and X, the LMNOP. <laughs> I'm just like, I have no idea what you guys are saying. But the reason is they're talking at industry level language at about yeah. a nine or a 10 out of 10. And, and the better they are, the better they can, the more complex they talk. The problem is now if they need to make a website to talk about what they do, they're probably going to be like, well, you know, we shouldn't really talk like medical terms. So let's bring it down a bit. But the, the truth is they're only going to bring it down to like a six or a seven. But that's still way too high for any of us who ha don't have a degree in, in medicine. So the truth is that people usually buy and understand well at a level two out of 10. So there's a big discrepancy there. There's a, we talk at nine or 10 when we're good at what we do, but people buy and they're comfortable reading and they, because we scan stuff, right? We're not, we're not going to a website to really get a real deep read. We just want to scan things. It's what we do. We've been kind of trained that way. So is your website full of insider languages that no one understands unless they were already working for your company? If so, your website is is failing to, to teach people about what it is that you do or compel them to take action. So that's the first thing. Um, so actually, I guess that's the second thing. The first is the technology is always changing, so it's tough. So I understand that. Second thing, the words are important, but the words are often confusing. And then the third thing I'd say about a, a website is, is really it has to have some sort of a plan. Uh, sometimes we just put sections in there or images, and it's not really... Um, it's not really thought through. It's just like, hey, I should probably say something about this product that we're offering. Oh, we should probably uh, have a picture here. Well, what do we do? Should we do a picture of our building? Do we do a picture of our products? And I would, I would just say, you know, that, that, that can be thought through. And that's when you need a consultant to kind of come along. This isn't just a commercial uh, for, for me or whatever. This is a, a true, like, you need to sometimes get somebody outside of your company to kind of come in and say, here's, you know, here's how I see it as an outsider. And anybody can do that. A friend can do it or a, or a consultant. But what we do, what I do with my clients, is I take them through what we call a brand script, which really just breaks down the key elements of a story and then says, okay, you know, who's your ideal character? What, are they, what do they look like? Uh, you know, who's, make, who's giving you all your, your revenue? We kind of figured out that person. Who's your ideal client? Who do you love working with? And who do you wish you could work with more? And we say, well, what's their key problems? What are some of the things that they're struggling with in the external world, but also internally? What's it doing to them? So is it stressing them out? Because that stuff is going to market really, really well. Actually, the internal reactions to the outside world. And so I would say, let's, let's put that in, on your website early so that it says, like, hey, this person understands me. They know that I'm staying awake at night worrying about this. And then we just say, here's some of the solutions that, or the benefits that we have. And so the website should talk not about your features. So we talk a lot of, on our websites about our features. Yeah. And I would say, go for the benefits. People want to see what it does for them. Remember, what's in it for me is kind of our driving question when yeah. somebody's looking at your website. So make sure you've thought it all through. And then how do you position yourself as a trustworthy guide that they're going to then want to give their money to? So it's very, it's risky, right? Any business transaction is a bit of a risk. This is their hard-earned money and they're wanting to give it to you. So why should they trust you? And then, of course, we talked about before the call to action, right? You should have a call to action all along the way, especially on your homepage, which is probably where people go 90% of the time. Like I said, the about section, probably the next, uh, the next most popular. But if they get on your homepage, it should, they should know exactly what to do. And you've thought it all through how they scan it and all that. And that's kind of why a website is very important. Okay. Thank you. I My appreciate pleasure. that My very pleasure. much. Um, like I said, here to serve, however I can. Maybe that was worth it for somebody just listening at this point, right? Right. Exactly. But then talk to me about the seven questions um, to, that I can, that, you know, anybody can ask so they can start implementing some of these ideas in their marketing. 
Right. So I just, I, I kind of mentioned it um, already. And that's kind of, let me just make sure I pull it up here for you. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't, there we go. Okay. So there's seven questions that we need to ask. And I think the first one is this. This is all what we do in a brand script session. We look at the question, what do our customers want? So when they wake up in the morning, what is driving them forward? Uh, what's happily ever after? If they, if they picture the end of the story, what are they, what, are they, what is it that's really uh, driving them forward? But there's something stopping them, and that's number two. That's our custom, what are our customers' external, internal, and philosophical problems? So whenever there's a problem, there's actually three problems. Like I said, there's the external problem. So one of the examples I like to give is, you know, sometimes my daughter will put a, a Barbie down the toilet or something, you know, and they'll, so all of a sudden there's a problem in our home and that physical water isn't passing through the toilet like it should. But when my, I am told about this, all of a sudden it sends me into a firestorm of emotion inside where all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I got, I don't have time for this. I don't, I'm not trained as a plumber. I want to look like the hero of my home. I don't want to have to bring someone else in to do this. Uh, you know, all of a sudden my daddy wounds start coming out. My dad didn't retweet me enough. Why didn't he teach me plumbing and all these things? And so that actually markets very powerful that those internal reactions to the physical world. And then philosophically, you know, there's some 30,000 foot issues that we kind of say, you know, people should be able to, uh, to solve their plumbing problems, especially something that's uh, very simple. Uh, you deserve to feel empowered at your house. Uh, you know, having a Barbie, wreck, a Barbie in your toilet wreck your day is just plain wrong. We have a solution for it, right? So there's lots of ways you can market to something simple as um, a clogged toilet. So that, that's the second question. What are our customers' external, internal, and philosophical problems? So what are they going through? What's keeping them up at night? And why is that just plain wrong? But thirdly, have we positioned our brand as a guide to the hero? And that's where it's, you know, like I said, it's important not to cast yourself as the hero of the story, but as the guide, because people who identify as heroes in their story are not looking for other heroes. They're looking for guides to help them win their story. And that's, I think, so important. Number four, have we created and communicated a clear plan for the hero to win the day? And so our hero stands on the brink, sorry, on the edge of a river, and they're looking on the other side of the river and they see all these happy people that, are, that have what they want. You know, they're, they have great relationships, they have success, their businesses are growing, they have a steady stream of new leads. And that's like, that's what I want. Oh, I wish I could just be there. But they look in front of them and all they see is raging water. And they think, man, this river is gonna overcome me if I try to go to the to go across this is not ever going to work well you come up to them as a guide put your arm around their shoulder and say look I, I understand you want to get there you see only a raging river but I know that there's three rocks to get across here take the first step here's the second step and the third step and we're going to be across in no time well once you've told them the three steps that can get them across to the life that they actually want they're a lot going to be a lot more inclined to take that first step if you know where it's going I mean, I think of the Indiana Jones picture, right, where he has to cross, uh, he, he has to cross that span, and every step he takes, then finally the next uh, step appears, right? Uh, we yeah. don't actually want that in real life because that's really scary. What we want is to know that every step is lined out for us, and then we can just take them. So you got to ask the question: What are our three steps to getting people across to where they want, and have we told that clearly to them? Now you say, well, there's like 47 steps in doing business with me. I have a realtor friend and, you know, between selling and buying the house of your dreams, there's like 47 little steps, but you'd never tell that to anybody at the beginning. You'd say, you know, there's three phases. There's the selling phase or the introductory phase where we get to know each other. Then we're going to make a plan of how we're going to execute uh, the buying and selling of property for you. And then we're going to actually move you into your, the house of your dreams. And that's all you're going to tell them is like, hey, it's one, two, three. So take the first step. Here's the call to action. And so uh, point number five, the question that we ask is, are our calls to action clear? Do you know what they are? And are they not vague or, or uh, sheepish, but they're actually bold and clear? That's what we want. And number six, have we identified the consequences that we are helping our hero avoid? And sometimes they get pushback on this. People say, oh, you know what? Like, I don't want to talk about doom and gloom. I don't want to talk about the consequences of not working with me. And I always just say, like, there are, there's got to be consequences. And the consequences are actually what make a story interesting. You know, if you heard that the bomb that needed to be diffused was made of baby powder or it was made of nuclear energy that could blow up 
uh, an entire city and, and kill millions of people. Which, which story are you more interested in? And one, everybody on the bus ends up with baby powder all over their face and their clothes. The other one, everybody ends up nuked. All of a sudden I'm realizing there's a lot more stakes in the second one, right? So I'm actually more interested yeah. in that than I am about people having to go uh, wash their clothes afterwards, after their bus ride. So the stakes, the consequences, um, we're actually helping them. We're, we're showing them, look, if you don't get treatment for this, you're gonna end up in chronic pain. Or if you don't uh, take action here, you're gonna end up with no leads, or you're gonna, your business is gonna struggle, or you're gonna be confused, or you're gonna miss out on opportunities, or you're gonna keep that 20 pounds that you've always wanted to lose that's now depressing you every year that you don't uh, take action on this. So by, by shaking people into reality, saying this is important, don't, miss a, don't waste another minute, don't waste another opportunity, don't lose another deal. Don't lose another day. I mean, people need to realize that, that you know, there's something at stake here. In fact, people are very motivated by not losing something. I think the statistics are, uh, have been done, I can't remember, what we, we would rather uh, not lose $100 than find $100, which is interesting, right? But I would just say, don't Ooh, make- That is interesting, yeah. Yeah, so we'd rather keep money in our pocket than find more money of equal right. value. And so all you're doing is you're just sprinkling in like salt. Look, like if you make everything doom and gloom all the time, then yeah, people are going to be like, this guy is like super negative. This is a really dark sight. This is, it must be a really right. uh, twisted company. But I would just say, sprinkle it in like salt. Uh, and too much salt in a loaf of bread is going to wreck everything. Too much salt on meat is going to wreck everything. But just a little salt in bread or a little salt in meat is going to make the recipe beautiful. And so have we identified the consequences we are helping our hero avoid and have we sprinkled them throughout our marketing collateral is the question we ask about when it comes to stories. Because let's be, let's be honest, if Frodo doesn't win the day, Middle Earth is destroyed, right? If uh, Katniss doesn't win the Hunger Games, then the district ends up right. uh, ruling with tyranny. So we all know the stakes, right? And then yeah. seven, we helped our hero imagine how we can improve their lives. So have we put... Uh -huh. Have we thought about what's happily ever after? What, are, what do people want? How are they, um, like, what does it look like in their minds? And have we put that picture of success? We call this the success bucket. So we fill it with, we fill it with images of healthy, happy people enjoying our products. So think about what it is that we're offering people. If you're a, a, um, a, a dentist, what does it look like when somebody doesn't have a toothache anymore? Are they, how do they smile? What are they doing at the time? And then put that all over your website, especially at the top. That's what, I mean, that's a freebie for you right there. It's like, if you don't have an image of successful, happy people enjoying your product in some way at the top, you're missing out on an opportunity to connect. Don't put a picture of your building. Don't put a picture of your team. Put a picture of uh, happy people enjoying your product in some way uh, on the top of your website because people want to see their, the best side of them in your uh, website. They want to see uh, their ideal self, their happily ever after self early on in your website. And that's, uh, that's a way to do it is to utilize the pictures and the words about what you offer, especially that headline too, right? It's very important to have a headline that kind of offers the, the chance of them having success because it'll catch their psychological desire to have, to have a life that's happily ever after. That is so interesting. Oh, good. I, I think I, it really is. And I think, um, boy, my favorite part might be, show them what success looks like because i think that's one of the biggest stopping points for people if they can't see that the problem is going to be solved and that they are going to be happier or feel better or whatever it is yeah. then you aren't making that connection that you can guide them to a solution exactly right yeah yeah wow showing people connecting or show if you're in the healthcare, showing people go for a run if you work with uh, the you know older older folks trying to help them retire, show them hanging out with their grandkids or on a cruise or something. You know, lots of these uh, little triggers uh, can can really be effective in in uh, uh, tapping into that desire that people have deep down for happily ever after. And you're saying I offer right. happily ever after, and then right below it, you're saying, look, I know you're not getting happily ever after. This is what you're going through. You're frustrated because your, your joints are, are um, acting up all the time and you can't move around like you want to. But I have these, or I can help you feel good, you know, have lots of energy and all this, and all of a sudden your company becomes very appealing. Yeah, yep. So it's just utilizing, that, that, it's, it's capturing the power of story 
Uh, like I said, the problem guides the story. Yeah. So the problem, the problem is what makes your website interesting. That's why you got to state the problem. Why do you exist? You know, too many people struggle with X. Most business leaders are up at night or anxious or stressed out with this and then state what, why it is that got, what got you into business in the first place. And then say, here's what I do to, re to resolve all that. Here's why you can trust me. And here's what you should do now. Call to action. Yeah, 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 right. It's great. It's beautiful yeah. stuff. It's beautiful stuff and it works, you know, like we did this, I had this one client, he, he just has something as simple as a tree service and he had a website that kind of looked like everybody, you know, they kind of get it as a, with the yellow pages, you get a website, <laughs> you know, they give you a tree <laughs> for signing up and then he had one of those kind of things and all of a sudden, uh, there was a big storm right after his website went live. And so it was like him versus all the other tree services in town. And he got like five leads, all of them commenting on how clear it was on his website of what they did. And that's right. when I realized there's something here and just seen it happen over and over again. It's the power of clear words and, uh, and, and using the power of story to leverage it. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. And, and I also like this idea of, um, Making sure that you're about us is really about them. It's right. really about, yeah, what you do for them. It's true because no one really cares about all the other stuff. About you, right? It's, about it's humbling, but if you really need to, to, to brag about how great you are, you know, that's what your spouses are for. And even some right. you know, your kids, actually, <laughs> your kids. Spouses don't tend to be so impressed about your high school achievements as much anymore. Exactly. <laughs> it's time to move on. That's it's right. Time to move exactly. on. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, Copernicus did teach us a good lesson when he realized that the earth doesn't actually revolve, uh, uh, sorry, the sun doesn't revolve around the earth. We are just part of a, a much bigger picture that's not, that's not all about us, right? So we have exactly. to- Exactly. The quicker you learn that, it's way more liberating because you can actually serve other people. You don't have to demand their attention or you don't need something from them. You know, it's like you can just go there go to every networking event saying, how can I serve these people with the problem that I'm solving? It's not about you. It's not about being recognized. It's not about being patted on the back or getting an, Oh wow. It's just about helping people with what you do. Exactly. That's right. And I think it's actually easier for people to talk about other people than it is to talk about themselves. So that's the other thing that I love about this is that if, if your focus is on, them and the situation they're in it just makes it so much easier to talk about exactly exactly and you yeah. know you're doing a good job it's like i mean when you're doing your podcast right you know you're serving people and so you just start by every time someone says what's your podcast about well, saying well most business leaders are struggling to grow their business and i have very right. practical steps to to help them and with great guests i mean there's the odd weird canadian that you bring on <laughs> every once in a while right? every once in a while yeah but you know most uh, for the most part we do uh try to serve our people by helping them grow their business you know what i mean it's just like exactly. oh, that, that's not self-serving that's totally you're in a posture of, of being a public servant by offering yeah great content to business leaders that's going to make them more money and put food on their table to feed their families exactly exactly yeah. that's right yep yeah, yeah. Wow, this is really great. Will you tell the listeners how they can find you and um, understand you, you've got a, a little something for them, if you could share that, please? Yeah, well, I mean, I come from the frozen tundra of Vancouver, British Columbia on the Pacific, wow. uh, on the Pacific coast there. Just kidding, it's actually quite balmy out here. Uh, but <laughs> they can find me uh, online at getclear.ca. That's my, my company is, is Get Clear, so we specialize in helping people create clear messages that connect with their ideal clients. And, uh, and I've actually created a little website for, for your listeners. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, create what's called a brand script. If they're interested in, in going through a session with me, we'll spend about 90 minutes to two hours just psychoanalyzing your ideal client, solving their problems. You know, we'll, we'll remind you of why you exist as a company, why, how you got in this in the first place, how to establish yourself as a trustworthy and authoritative guide that people actually want to do business with, we'll work on your calls to action, testimonials, how you, how you insert those, and then uh, some of the stakes of not working with you and how, to, how you're helping people improve their lives. So that's all called the brand script session. You can learn more about it at getclear.ca slash A-Y-B-G. 
And so that's just, a, a, it'll be a fun opportunity. It does come with some cost, but it's always a valuable uh, resource. I, I'd say you should never do another bit of marketing collateral. Don't create anything until you do a brand script. You don't have to do it with me, yeah. but you do have to do it because it becomes the foundation on which you build everything from, from how you talk about your company to uh, the words you put on your website. That is great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and for spending some time with us. And I also like to always like to thank the listeners and our sponsor. Uh, remember to get a free trial of audible.com and a free audiobook. Uh, when you sign up for that trial, go to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous walrus, the bulbous walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Imagine how fast we could solve the world's biggest problems if more SaaS startups would gain traction sooner. Welcome to the Tech Entrepreneur on a Mission podcast. This podcast is dedicated to sharing experiences from B2B SaaS CEOs who are going above and beyond to deliver change that is noticed. You will hear their secrets and learn what is required to build a SaaS business that the world starts talking about and keeps talking about and how to overcome the roadblocks to do so.